Okay, when you do this, if you think about, holy shit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know that a lot of you at home struggle with the game of golf because of two very catastrophic faults, early extension and throwing the golf club way too early from your trail side. Both of these movements are caused from a lot of your trail side dominance, and both of those movements really tie hands with one another, believe it or not. Today, we're actually gonna fix this stuff by teaching you how to use more of your lead side of your body in the downswing. That's right, we're gonna create better action from the lead side so that all of that extracurricular activity that you like to do from the trail side, you can continue to do it. But now you've got it stapled back to a lead side function that's helping you produce and preserve lag, that's helping you turn it into a whole lot more forward shaft lean, and that's helping you get away from that flippy scoopy position that you've been battling with your entire golfing lives. Early extension and throwing the right arm is a very common mistake in the world of golf. We're gonna fix it today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so if you are brand new to the channel, this is the first video that you've seen, do me a big favor, head down below real quick, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and if you like today's video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post that up below and I'll help you out as best I possibly can. Let's get to work. Okay, so what we're gonna do here to get ourselves set up for success is we're gonna actually get our weight kind of preset into our lead side in the correct area of the foot. Now, I've seen a lot of golfers over the many years that I've taught this game where they have pretty decent looking setup positions and pretty decent looking takeaway and backswings. And actually, they start to transition and start to shift their weight. But as soon as that weight starts to shift on the lead side, that's when all hell breaks loose and we start the processes of accelerating the golf club way too early. Now, what I want you to remember is, is that there's two components that's gonna move the hands and the arms from the top of the golf swing down into delivery. And those two components are gravity and a whole lot of big, big hip action. That's right. Now, what I mean by gravity is, is that if I were to go to a nine o'clock position, okay, my shoulders are supporting my arms, right? If I turn the muscles off of my shoulders, what are my arms doing? Well, they're lowering. Now that movement coupled back with my hips rotating is pulling my torso around, which is moving my shoulders around. And because my arms are attached to my shoulders, where are my hands and arms gonna end up? Well, if my arms start dropping because of gravity and I start shifting my hips over to my lead side, well, my hands came down into that really fancy position that you see all of us good ball strikers in. That's right. Now, you don't get into that position because you start the processes of throwing the club. You don't continue to work through that transitional phase into a posted up position or an impact position. So we're gonna start out by getting you to feel your lead leg and your lead hip first. Then we're gonna talk about the lead shoulder and the lead arm. Once you get these two movements and you've got some awareness of it, we're gonna marry those two things together and then we're gonna start adding some fluidity to it. Okay, so first order of business is we're gonna strip the golf club out of there we're gonna strip the trail arm out of there. In fact, you can duct tape your trail arm to your back or you can just completely cut it off your body for the next three to five years of your life while you train this lead side stuff. So what we're gonna do is get our trail hand behind our back, our lead arm is gonna be hanging down freely. We're gonna get comfortable feeling 80% of our weight underneath our ankle joint first and what we're gonna do with that weight. So I want you to go ahead from a static address position, I want your lead arm hanging down freely. You shouldn't be tense in your shoulder, you should just let your arm swing freely. You're gonna make a little pressure shift under your trail side. You're gonna turn back to where your nine o'clock position is established with your lead arm parallel to the ground. From here, all I want you to do is I want you to make a big old robust sit movement down onto your lead ankle. Okay, you're gonna sit down onto your lead ankle. Your head, your chest, everything is moving a long ways here, right? And you're gonna feel 80 to 90% of your weight now parked underneath the lead ankle. It's a lot of weight, right? Now, if you focus on where the weight's moving through in your foot, that's gonna force your hips to actually start to open up. That's right. Your hips are moving very dynamically in the golf swing, right? They're gonna be shifting, they're gonna be rotating, they're gonna be dropping down a little bit. So by thinking about where the pressure is in your foot, that's forcing the hips to actually start to open back up. If your weight goes to the forward part of the foot, your hips are gonna be closed, you're gonna be doing what we call a closed hip slide. That's gonna be too much horizontal movement of the pelvis. So what I want you to do is I want you to be able to get comfortable with getting from your nine o'clock position on your trail side to sitting down onto your lead side. Now, this position is what we're gonna be getting, this is what we're gonna be working on today, okay? We wanna be able to get into this position, so you've gotta be able to start and move to this spot for this drill to be able to work properly. Now, as we get our weight underneath that ankle joint, what we wanna do is we wanna use that, that weight to our advantage. And this is where the fun starts to happen. This is where the ground becomes a very, very big source of energy for you, and it becomes a whole lot of help to this drill. 
That weight that you feel underneath your ankle joint, I want you to push it into the ground. And the ground is a big, beautiful thing. In fact, it's way stronger than you are. By pushing into the ground, what you're gonna notice is, is that your lead leg begins to straighten up. That's right. A lot of you are gonna be lucky enough to actually be able to get that push movement to actually aid in the rotation of the hips. You've heard that expression before, push the hip back. I want you to push into the ground as hard as you possibly can so you can feel what it's like to move up out of the ground. If your hips aren't rotating open to the 35 to 45 degree mark, then you're gonna to have to focus on this lead hip socket pulling back and away from the golf ball as you do it simultaneously. Now, when you watch me demonstrate this movement, okay, where I'm pushing into the ground and pulling that hip back, you're probably noticing that my lead shoulder, my head start to move a little bit vertically. That's the extension piece that gets a lot of you into trouble. We're gonna fight off that extension by when we make that post-up move happen, we're gonna keep our lead shoulder as low to the ground as we possibly can. In conjunction with that, as that starts to happen, you're gonna let your lead arm swing freely. You're gonna keep your lead arm moving through to three o'clock. You shouldn't be tense with your arms, you just let it swing freely. Now, that right there is the entire drill and the whole enchilada here, but we're gonna work on getting it married together here so that you understand how to get the movements dialed in perfectly independently and then how to bring them back together. So let's go ahead and take our setup position together. We're gonna to set up a ball position so it's off of the lead ear, or off the logo on our chest. We're gonna make a little small shift to our trail side. Lead arm is gonna swing back to about nine o'clock. Downward pressure onto the lead leg. Now remember, the shoulder needs to stay down. And I would actually try to feel like the shoulder stays a little bit closed and your arm is gonna swing through freely. And that's gonna happen coupled with the post-up movement. So even by trying to keep the shoulder back in this direction and keeping it down, what you're gonna notice is, is that as my post-up move starts to happen, is it starts to help move that shoulder up a little bit. Try your best to fight it off and keep it down. Let the arms swing through to three o'clock. So it's sit down on the lead ankle, push it into the ground, open the hips up, keep the shoulder down and let the arms swing freely. So left ankle into the ground, clear the hips, left shoulder down, arm. I want those done in unison with one another. That post-up move is pulling the shoulders around. That post-up move is moving the hand and arm path back out in front of you. It's helping add speed to that lead arm. Once you can get to a point where you can do it really in good fluidity, and you look at it on camera, and you can see that you're posting up, your hips are opening up, your shoulders down, and your arm is swinging underneath you, and you've got some awareness of those movements, then pick up the golf club right away and start making some swings to see if you can recreate it. This is where you're gonna find if this drill is gonna allow you to sink or swim. Not every golf drill that exists in the world of YouTube or Instagram or TikTok is a drill that's designed for you. You wanna remember that everybody's gonna to respond to this information differently, and how you respond is how you practice. You need to learn the movements and then practice it properly. So now once you've got that awareness, bring the club back in, right hand on the side of the club. I, I don't like to do lead arm only drills with the golf club in our hands because it's not relatable. I want the trail hand on the club and I want you to feel the activation from the lead side. So we're gonna shift over to our nine o'clock position, down, downward pressure onto the lead ankle, post up, shoulder down, and swing that arm all the way up to three o'clock. Let that arm move keeping those movements in the very, very tip of your brain and staying focused there. Okay, you're creating awareness. Nine o'clock, downward pressure, post. So I'm trying to keep that shoulder down, trying to keep that arm moving. Okay, once you start to feel it, like, okay, I've got some awareness of this, then start trying to do it in fluidity. Okay, nine o'clock swings are all you need at first. So I feel downward pressure, lead shoulder down, lead arm moving. If you're focused on creating better action from the lead side, then it doesn't matter what your trail side is trying to do in this process because you're fighting off those two really big catastrophic faults. 
So once you start getting the hang of it, you can start trying to get some golf balls in here. Remember, the whole point is not to try to hit golf balls out of the back of the drive range. The whole point is to take these movements and turn them into something useful for you. So I'm going to do a two to one practice ratio. So back to nine o'clock, downward pressure, post up, trying to keep the lead shoulder down. So every practice session that you work on something like this, you want to start out by learning the movements, isolate, then start immediately making it relatable. Golf posture, start trying to create some fluidity around these movements. You get connected to those, then bring the golf club back in and start practicing this stuff properly. Give yourself a little bit more grace though. Don't try to go and do just a two to one ratio. Expand it, do 10 reps, 15 reps to one golf ball. As you start to get more proficient with this over the next few weeks, you can start decreasing the number of practice reps that you're doing, and you can start increasing the number of balls that you hit in a session. But remember, these drills are designed to teach you a new movement, teach you a correct movement that's gonna help you, and then allow you some freedom in this practice process so you can become a much better version of yourself. Don't go out there and try to be good on the first day. Just try to get 1% better. Let's go through the protocol one more time, okay? So remember, lead arm hanging freely, downward pressure, push in the ground, open the hips up, shoulder stays down, arm swings through to three o'clock. Downward pressure, shoulder stays down, arm swings to three o'clock. Okay, once you've got it, you feel like you can move into some fluidity there, you feel like you've mastered it, pick the club back up, You can see that I did it from a static position so I could really stay focused on the lead side. Okay, downward pressure, post up, trying to keep that shoulder down as the arm moves through. Now I'm gonna do my two to one here. All right guys, so there you have it. There is a good drill for you to create better lead side action in your golf swing so that you stop messing the party up with your trail side. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Get out there and let's play some great golf.